Hello, I've been working on some video recorders that take these obscure tapes. It's called the CVC format. And this was one of them. It's the Grundig VP100, a very rare model. And both of the machines I've been working on require drive belts. And it's drive belt day. They've arrived today. These belts are for the Technicolor Funai machine. So that's the one where I found a belt that I'd changed some years ago. Uh, seemingly stretched a bit and I've ordered a little collection of belts so hopefully one of those will do that job nicely but before then I think I'll start on the uh, Grundig one and that takes a smaller belt and that's rather hard to obtain so I've ordered again a selection of different belts in the hope that uh, one of these will be the right size okay let's uh, get stuck in so this was the uh, deck sat here on top of the PCB and it doesn't fully separate because it's got some bodge wires that they've added and this is where we need to uh, fit a flat belt this has all been cleaned up although I see it's collected some more gunge from somewhere so I'll just clean that a little bit and hopefully we can fit a belt in that location this black gunge was everywhere all over the pulleys but I believe that the other belt and the uh, idler tyre surfaces there's two of them they look to be in good order so hopefully a drive belt is all it requires and I've ordered four sizes so uh, that should cover it off shouldn't it I think that one will be too big so we'll start with uh, second to largest but we'll see I would say that the second to largest one is actually a little bit too tight I don't think the uh, I think the motor is going to struggle to drive that so maybe we'll have to go for the larger one I mean, it's not terrible, but I, I just think that might be too much load on the motor. I think that's probably better. Everything seems to be working properly. So I'm going to reassemble the deck. Unfortunately, there's no real way of testing this out of the machine. You can't just power up the deck on its own. So I'm going to have to do pretty much a full reassembly in order to uh, test it. That feels promising. So that was 5mm uh, width, 0.55mm thickness, 60mm diameter that I've installed there. Now there are quite a lot of connectors to refit to the board, so I've got to uh, make sure I don't miss any out. And some of them are a little bit fiddly. Right, this is the tricky one because you have to fit that with the board almost in place. And then we have this edge connector to the top PCB. Make sure that's lined up. I'm also just making sure these three switches are all in the forward location. Now there's no audio video outputs on this, well apart from a headphone socket. We need to uh, connect the power supply and that has the AV outputs here. Well I have it uh, connected to a monitor though that might be rampant optimism because first we need to see if it mechanically runs. Let's power it up. Press eject, put a tape in, the first thing I'd like to do is see if it can rewind. It is rewinding but it's not latching down. Why would that be? Okay. Oh, it's latched down now. Okay. Stop. Oh, that was play. It looks like it's playing, but we're not getting any picture. Let's try the slow motion thing. That all seems to be working. It all looks so promising, apart from the fact there's no picture. I'll just try fast forward. Yes, good. Where's the tracking control? It has a, a detent position in the centre, so I'll uh, leave it there. It might just be dirty heads. 
the lace-up is much quicker and more positive than on the Technicolor Funai machines. It even sounds like the servos are working. Definitely worth trying to clean the heads. Well, I'll look at them under the microscope first. Power it down. If I can get the microscope through the heads, it might not be possible. Well, no, I can't really see anything. Uh, I can't look end on to the heads. So uh, I'll just have to clean the heads with head cleaning sticks and see if it comes out any better. I'll try to set you up so you can sort of see the head tip there. I think that's okay. Let's swing it around to the other head. Okay, I don't think those heads were contaminated. They also look intact. So uh, I don't know what the problem is. I'm just going to make sure I've connected this properly to the head amplifier. Thing is, that's not the same. I show you the TV there. Let's uh, try and get these reflections off, lights off. Right. That's not the same as nothing. When I had nothing, the input signal there is stable. When I press that, it goes all jiggly. Like there's something there. It's just not a good picture. So there's definitely a signal of some sort coming out of here. I'm inclined to just leave that playing for a few minutes and see if it might magically improve. I'll rewind the tape. It stopped before the end of the tape, or the start of the tape. I wonder why that was. So we're having this problem with it not latching or or operating the auto stop when it shouldn't be. I don't know if this memory thing might be causing that problem. I know there's a, a rewind to zero memory. Is that switched on by accident? Try that. Still nothing, but I'll just leave it playing for a few minutes. Now, worst case scenario is it got capacitor trouble deep in the circuits here. Um, I'll perhaps have a look and see if we can find the service manual and I can see it's a test point there, there's going to be test points elsewhere so perhaps we can pick up the FM waveform from the heads and uh, have a look at that. I'm trying something here. I've got a uh, colour bars coming from this time base corrector. To the input here and they are routing through properly to the monitor. That's telling us that all this signal path is working, there's no fault with that. So if there's a problem it is with the uh, heads or head amplifier or circuitry in here. That's uh, kind of bad news in a way but what I'm doing now is making a short test recording. I'll rewind it. And I will go and try that on a known good machine. And we're still having this problem sometimes that buttons don't latch. Why is that? I'd be very surprised if we do get a, a result on that recording, but uh, it tells us something anyway. Well, that result of trying to record colour bars on here looked a bit like trying to play an NTSC tape on a PAL machine. OK. This couldn't possibly be an NTSC machine, could it? <laughs> Let's try an NTSC tape. No, that's not the problem. 
but it does look like uh, there's no servo lock. And we keep on having this problem of it uh, shutting down and rewind. Might be, yes, might be the uh, memory function on here. So a little bit odd that it's behaving is that there's no uh, capstan and or drum lock. Well, I have the schematics uh, and there are, of course, quite a lot of capacitors in it. Most of which in the servo area, which is where I think the problem lies, are right underneath the deck. So uh, I'll take the uh, deck off the main PCB again. Right, a lot of the uh, servo area is here, so I particularly need to be looking at capacitors around here. It may be as well to just change all capacitors, but uh, that would be a fairly time-consuming job. I see there's some of the gunge from the um, rotten belt sat on an IC there, so uh, I'll clean that up. Right, this is going to take a little bit more time. So I think we'll fit the uh, drive belt in the uh, Technicolor CVC machine next and come back to this one when I've uh, changed some capacitors. For the Technicolor Funai uh, showcase machine and the deck of course is the same on the portables. So this is the belt that came off. So I need to choose one of these. I mean that's a fair bit smaller. Choose one of these uh, to replace this one which was too thick and just dragged on the motor too much. So that one seems about right. It's just a little bit shorter than the one that originally came off. Okay, so I selected the uh, 92 millimeter, uh, five millimeter width. Although I do wonder if I might have been better using the 4mm, but uh, it's in there now, so I'm going to leave it. Let's uh, reassemble all this and test it. Okay, we're ready to test it. I've not reassembled everything, just put it back into uh, one piece with one screw fitted for earthing as I did last time. Let's see what happens. That's the eject button, not play. Let it settle for a moment. We seem to have a line there which implies that we may have some grot on the uh, tape path but fundamentally that is working that may be tape damage sound is working yes there's lots of tape damage on this old tape but we're no longer getting a regular cyclical problem of it losing tracking Yes, that's fixed. That is actually fixed. I'm quite pleased with that. Right, I've got some final reassembly to do, but uh, that is looking really nice. As nice as CVC ever does, because it's never a great format in the first place. But yes, I like that. So for reassembly, one of the things I need to do is refit this tiny screw here, which goes into a pillar right there, which secures the top deck and then the cover goes back on and it screws and then a tracking uh, a variable speed control and the way this one works is slightly weird that this is variable tracking with the center position being about normal but then it has an off position there where it goes back to also default so default there and then variable and then back to default it's slightly weird but generally tracking is very good on these machines because of the way the uh, deck layout is built um, 
it's not got super fine critical adjustment posts like VHS and Vita do. Right, this one I don't want to do up tight until I put the top on. Reconnecting the uh, top panel connector here. And a quick final check that we're all happy. Perfect. Now, I don't know if I can demonstrate a fault, but sometimes when you press play, it won't fully lace, and what you'll hear is a machine chattering, makes a sort of clattering noise. Uh, let's see if I can get that fault to happen. It probably won't today, but occasionally nearly all CV machi CVC machines will make that noise. I've just clogged the heads, I think. I do have a head, clog, head cleaner tape for this format, but I've never worked out how to use it. It's a slightly weird thing. Usually it's just a case of leave it playing and it'll fix itself. Okay, it's working beautifully, but on an occasion where it doesn't work, the answer is to tap the play button a few times and it shuffles in or out of the uh, laced up position. But... Uh, we're not going to be able to demonstrate that fault. And now we've got a clogged head. So I'll just leave it playing and that will doubtlessly clear itself. Oh, I think it is. There we go. It's absolutely perfect. So I will now uh, have a look at the Grundig CV, uh, VP100. Uh, I think I'm just going to uh, work my way through the capacitors on the board and see what state they're in. Uh, or I think it's a few too many to just replace them all. So we'll have a look and decide um, how I'm going to tackle that. Okay, firstly a quick check that uh, nothing has changed since last time. Still no meaningful picture. Okay, let's uh, make a few voltage measurements. There's not many I can make actually. The, all we have is a schematic. It's not uh, a full service manual, but it's what we have. All right, that 20 way connector is this edge connector from the side PCB to the main one. Though uh, where pin one is, I'm yet to ascertain. Okay, so that end is pin 20, this end is pin 1. Let's make some measurements. We should have, at one end, we should have 9.5 volts stabilised. And I think we that might appear elsewhere as well. So let's uh, set ourselves up for that. You'll be seeing it at the same time as me. Power it up. Press play. So we should have 9.5 volts at this end position. 9.2 I think that's close enough and pin 11 should also be 9.5 volts during playback well yeah it's a little low but not big enough to make a difference I don't believe but going back to the first one it should be 9.5 volts stabilised 9.2 it's not very good 9.5 volts but is it enough to make a difference I don't think that's enough to stop it, but on the other hand, it might be out of spec. So let's uh, just look at the uh, power supply circuitry behind that, which I think would be on this board. Einstellung. There is an adjustment Einstellung on VR901. OK, that appears to be the adjustment control for the 9.2 volts. So we'll, uh, 9.5 volts, we'll adjust that to get it in spec. So it's on 9.19 volts at the moment, and it's supposed to be 9.5. This apparently is adjustment for it. Right, that's uh, much closer. I'm sure it's made no difference, but it was worth setting up. No difference at all, of course. I'm trying to set this up so we can look at the uh, head output. 
there's the um, head switching signal so that looks valid and then when I try to pick up the FM envelope what I think is the FM envelope I get nothing just a little bit of noise you can see that so it appears to be nothing from the heads well that kind of lines up with what I'm seeing so uh, why is that then let's just probe around some of these test points I don't know what they do if you don't have the full service manual I'm not seeing anything in the head amplifier module so this HA11718 uh, chip which should be the head amplifier it's got pin 1, it's got a lovely square wave I'll get on there again but I've just been stepping through it and found more or less nothing on any other pin which is suspicious isn't it well there's not a lot of information on that chip but clearly the fact there's no voltages whatsoever not even the supply does imply there is a problem so I need to try to work out which a supply pin is and um, where that supply comes from backtracking a little bit we found that during play we had 9.5 volts on pins 1 and 11 wherever that is over here on this connector and pin 11 is the one that should be during playback and yet we're not getting 9.5 volts over here somewhere to uh, a chip which is there that chip there so there's some sort of misunderstanding or fault in that so let's uh, just go through that again I'll uh, select play and I think that's in play mode and power it up 9.5 volts on pin 1 which is now properly 9.5 and pin 11 and this is the key one 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 9.4 volts that's fine okay but on pin 13 of this IC which is HA11718 head amplifier so that's 16 15 14 13 we are not getting our 9.5 volts we're getting almost nothing so the lack of supply voltage to that IC is the reason I think we're not getting any output from the head amplifier. Let me explain a little bit of what I've been doing for a while. These are the metal screening cans that go above and below the head amplifier. And unfortunately, when taking off the lower one, I did damage some tracks, some, some of the earthing tracks around the edge. But I'll fix all that when I reassemble it. I've been looking for this uh, supply voltage, 9.5 volts via de Gaba, which means 9.5 volts uh, playback and it appears at pin 20 or 11 at this edge connector here and it appears at some points on the board but it doesn't appear everywhere somewhere it's gone missing before it gets to the um, head amplifier and unfortunately though we have the plots here for the um, PCB they're not clear enough they're just not clear enough me to see all the traces and I can't see where that voltage is lost but somewhere there's going to be a through plated hole that stops that supply voltage going from this point here to over here and I've got it marked up somewhere so I am forced to just put a link in and of course I need I have to have very good confidence in myself that I've definitely identified the correct signal here that I've not made a mistake because I would blow things up but I am very confident that I've got the correct uh, voltage uh, here and not here so I can safely put in a link now whether that completely fixes it depends a bit exactly what the failure mode is if it's bad soldering on a component it might be that I bring up the 9.5 volts on some circuits and not others and it may not fix it but if it's through plating fault then um, it will hopefully fix the fault I've got no choice now I've spent hours desperately searching to find where it disappears the 9.5 volts is connected to many components here and I can trace between those components as per the schematics but at no point can I find out how it arrives over here on the other side where it does make it to other components 
So I've done a lot of searching on the circuit diagram. I can see parts of it powered here, parts of it not powered there. There's a connection between the two somewhere under here and I cannot find it. So I'm going to replace that with a link uh, and I'll refit the uh, earthing cans and uh, we'll try it out and see if it helps. Now it's important to remember here, I'm trying to replace the 9.5 volt supply, not just power this head amplifier IC. So the head amplifier IC's supply pin is here, but I don't want to put the power there because between that and the rail is an inductor. And it's important to keep the inductor in circuit. So I've got a wire from the supply rail as it comes in on the side here, through to the top of its inductor there, which you can see on this the microscope. And the wire goes down here to the edge contact at pin 11. Right, we have that link in there, which will, should, provide the 9.5 volts to all the head amplifier electronics. So before I try it, I'm going to set up a poll. Uh, it'll be on the YouTube community page. Do you think that will fix it? That it'll be exactly the same? Or sort of working a bit but still got major problems? Let me know before we go to part three where we get to actually try it out. I'll do lots more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.